Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. We are in episode three of our Gravity Simulator series. Uh, we've got sort of two projects going on right now. One, we've uh, simulated the motion of the Earth going around the Sun, and we've simulated the motion of two stars, uh, a binary star system uh, orbiting around each other. And we've gotten some pretty interesting results. We've seen some pretty uh, consistent stuff about how the uh, total energy of the system determines whether those things are going to orbit around each other or scatter away and never see each other again. Um, of course, in the universe in space, we don't always have just two objects interacting. Of course, our own solar system has a number of bodies uh, orbiting the sun, not just our familiar planets, but also a host of dwarf planets, uh, asteroids, comets, etc. Um, along with all the moons that uh, orbit all, uh, a bunch of the planets. And of course, uh, it, we don't just encounter binary star systems, but there are a number of trinary star systems out there uh, that contain uh, three stars orbiting around each other. So what we're going to do today is take a look at those two cases. We're going to look at uh, uh, adding another planet to our planetary system, and we're going to look at adding a third star to our, uh, to our binary star system. Uh, we'll start with the uh, with the planetary system. So we were able last time to uh, get the uh, Earth orbiting around the Sun uh, without this little line here, which makes the Earth run away from the Sun. So I had to make sure I commented that out. Just occurred to me, I, I just uploaded that file with it uncommented. So if you download that file uh, from last video, uh, it actually has the Earth escaping the Sun. So here we've got the Sun, we've got the Earth orbiting around here. Um, I may need to increase the size of the Earth there so that it becomes, uh, so that it becomes more visible. Um, let's maybe bump that up another couple of orders of magnitude. Okay, there we go. So this is obviously no longer to scale. Um, the sun is much, much larger than the Earth is compared to this. The Earth is much, much smaller than this compared to the distance between the two. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to add in another, uh, another planet. Um, I'd thought about adding Jupiter, but I, I tried that out and it doesn't change our, our orbit by that much. And plus, by the time you scale out to see Jupiter's orbit, you can't really see Earth's orbit anymore. So what I thought might be fun to do would be to add in another Earth. So let's suppose uh, the Earth had a twin along roughly the same orbit uh, that the Earth is going around. Um, so we can set that up here. We can set up second Earth, IBB equal to three. Of course, that means I need to start up here with a, uh, with a mass of it. So let's say mass list append mass list of two because the earth is object two in this case so that way if we wanted to make a change to the earth I would make that change here so this is second earth let's suppose, let's just imagine uh, you know that there was an earth that we missed somewhere um, <laughs> which we wouldn't have gotten any signals from because it would have matched our own signals right yeah I'm, I'm, I'm crafting a sci-fi story in my head now as, as we go um, so what we can do rather than uh, recreating all this uh, we can just copy this part here and just have it replicate everything about the current about the the original earth that we have um, so let's do BB list of two dot radius uh, excuse me radius and instead of only, only we don't want it to be, you know, the 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 exact same location, or else the two, you know, you, you don't want things interacting gravitationally with zero separation because that's a division by zero. So what we can do. Let's have this thing flip its x and y coordinates. So let's have this thing be the bb list of two dot y, and then the same thing here for the x. So we'll have this thing instead of starting out at one along the x and zero along the y. We'll have it start at one along the y and zero along the x. Well, not one, but you know, this 147 billion, you know, a little bit different from one. But I always like to think in terms of the unit circle. Unit circle, extremely useful uh, uh, thing. Um, okay, cool. And then I need to give this thing a velocity, of course. So we need to have velocity list dot append. 
And let's make this thing a vector. So if I want this thing to be up here instead, I want it to be going in the negative x direction and not in the y direction. So what I want to do is I want to give it, um, I want its x component to be velocity less of IBB. I want this thing to be the negative y component of the Earth's velocity because the Earth's velocity is pointing upward in the y direction and along the x direction. So we'll make this thing pointing leftward with the same magnitude. Um, if you're a linear algebra student, this is just the rotation matrix, right, in, in two dimensions. Um, comma, velocity, list, IBB dot x. So I'm just giving it, I'm just swapping the x and the y components and making it negative so that way these two things both go around counterclockwise instead of one going clockwise and one going counterclockwise and then they collide with each other. We would rather our Earths not collide with each other. Okay. So what that should do is, uh, let's see, so, so NBBS is automatically taken care of. So this is why we went through all that trouble in the first episode, possibly nauseatingly so to some of you, of setting up all this list notation, because now that I've got a third object in here, all of these uh, loops that involve NBBS just update to add one additional step. Um, and so what we'll end up getting is we'll end up having the thing run just fine, Fingers crossed, I know every time I say that something goes wrong, but in it should go just fine if it goes according to plan. Uh, so let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. Oh, and of course, you know, never, uh, oh, this was not because of any problem with the list notation, this was because I forgot to close parenthesis. Um, there we go. Okay, cool, so our total momentum, our total energy is still negative. Oh dear, what happened to this earth? This earth is falling into the sun. What what ha what did I do wrong with second earth? Oh, and there we go. And that is why you don't want things to coincide because you'll have a division by zero and that's just gonna shoot off. All right, what did I do mistakenly? Um, oh, I see what I did. I, this thing. Oh, whoops, whoops, I plugged in an IBB here. I don't want that to be an IBB, I want that to be a two. There we go, let's try that instead. Okay, there we go, so the two Earths are now in motion. Uh, so this so this Earth has all the same conditions as this one, it's just offset by 90 degrees. Um, so if it were left on its own, it would go along the same orbit that we got for the Earth last time. What I do notice is that the first Earth, it's coming along. It's not quite meeting up because we, we've taken that, that, that uh, orbit and we've rotated it by 90 degrees. So instead of the orbit being squished this way, it's going to be squished this way or vice versa. Yeah. Um, because our Earth does not go around in the orbit of a circle, it goes around in an ellipse. It's very close to a circle, it's like 3% off from a circle. Again, that percentage is not a technical uh, number, uh, but we're just a smidge off from being a circle. Now what I notice is these two are making their way around and the, the Let's see, so this is the second, this is the new Earth, right? Because it's ahead of the first one. It's almost closing in on the same orbit. Uh, let's watch what happens to the first Earth. So the first first Earth, boy, the, I, I do need to write a physics Dr. Seuss book, don't I? The first Earth, if it reaches this point, then we know that these two orbits have, this orbit has not really significantly uh, changed. And in fact, I am seeing that that's uh, getting close into the, original orbit. Okay, so these two are not really interacting with each other significantly. Why? Because they're pretty far apart, right? The interaction between each of them and the sun is stronger than the interaction between the two Earths. So we need to get these two things a little bit closer together. Um, so let's try doing this. Let's say we want to rotate this thing away by, uh, by some angle theta. Right, so theta right now has been 90 degrees, right? But let's make it a let's make it smaller than that. Let's say we make it 45 degrees. 45 degrees in the language of radians is pi over four. Yep. Let's make this thing pi over four. And so this needs to be multiplied by, let me see if I can remember my rotation matrix. The y the, the new x needs to be multiplied. Oh dear, uh, that needs to be multiplied by the sine of the angle 
plus the val list of two dot x times cosine of theta. So that if theta equals zero, then this thing is just equal to uh, uh, the original x component. And then I need to do the same thing. Well, I need to do the, the reverse of that for the y component. So times the x needs to be multiplied by sine of theta. Hello, Pumpkin. Thank you for joining us to talk about rotation matrices. I don't want to go back and edit that, so you'll actually be on this video. I can usually edit her out, but I don't want to go back and make a mistake on the rotation matrices. So we'll say times vel list of 2 dot y times cosine theta, right? Yes. Okay, cool. And then I need to do the same thing up here for the position. We'll take a cat break for just a second. Okay, I have finished my cat break. Uh, so now we can go up here and do the same transformation to the, uh, to the Y here. So we are taking this thing and I should probably double check, make sure. I, I probably did it wrong, but we'll, we'll find out in a minute. Um, oh, so actually I need to find theta up above. There we go. Uh, let's see here. So we're gonna put our second earth uh, let's see, so this is going to be times the sine of theta minus bb list of 2 dot x times the cosine of theta. Right, these are going to transform differently because one's a position vector, one's, a, one's the, the circumferential vector is the fancy term for that. So this thing gets multiplied by sine of theta. And does it need to be a minus? I think that's still a plus. Yes, plus bb list of 2 dot y times the cosine of theta. All right, and if that doesn't work out, then uh, you know we'll know very soon uh, that it didn't. So let's see what this gives us. Okay, so I did make a few mistakes. First of all, this thing ended up being way far over there, and it's headed in the wrong direction. Uh, so let's see what I can do to fix that. Um, let's start, I'll start out with the position. So theta is pi divided by four, that's not a problem. So when this thing gets multiplied by sine of theta, that means however far up it goes. Okay, I think that part's correct. I think it's this part that I made a mistake with. Let's try adding that, I guess. I should have just looked up the uh, rotation matrix while I was uh, taking a cat break. I should have also muted my cell phone. Oh well. Okay, cool. So that fixed it. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah, because the velocity was pointing in the correct direction. Okay. Uh, why did I think there needed to be a negative? I don't know. Okay, so these two are going around here. Uh, it doesn't look like we've got a significant um, deviation there. So let's try making our um, let's try making our angle smaller. So theta equals three, three divided by four. That's about 0.75. So let's try making this thing half of a radian. Basically what I want to do is I want to make this smaller until these two things start interacting with each other in a more interesting manner. Uh, doesn't look like they're doing much now because the closer I place this one to the other one, then the, uh, more identical there, um, their orbits are going to be. Let's try cutting this thing in half. So just a quarter of a radian away. Okay, we're getting to the point where I may need to make these radii smaller, but we'll find out. All right, let's keep decreasing this. Tenth of a radian apart. Okay, here we've got our two Earths. I guess this just goes to show you how uh, you know much stronger the uh, the sun's grab or how much more massive the sun is than the Earth really. So let's do a couple of things. Let's take the Earth's radius, decrease it by half because I don't want these two to be like you know overlapping each other or something. And then let's cut this thing down by a factor of ten. This is where we play. Uh, I know the term mad scientist is is frowned upon by the scientific community. 
uh, this is where we play um, politically correct term for mad scientists is what I'm looking for. Okay, so this is interesting because they started out here. They're now diverging a little bit from each other. Let's see if we can get a better view over here. Oh, that's interesting. Rotate that back. Um, hmm. And this is what I get for not having a script. Um, so it's interesting that they've diverged from each other here because they started out in nearly identical uh, initial conditions here. Yeah. Zoom back out. Interesting. Okay, let's try one other thing. Let's see what happens if we... So that obviously is not doing too much that's interesting. Let's take this back to a tenth of a radian. Yeah, so now they're, you know, now they're, now they're notably far apart from each other. Let's do this. Let's take this mass, mass and let's make it less. Let's make the, the second one smaller. So let's divide it by maybe a thousand. And just so we can keep track of them, let's divide the uh, radius. Uh, let's make it a tenth of what it was before. Make it a tenth of the other one. There we go. So we've got the larger one and the smaller one. Okay, so they are still far enough apart that they're not really interacting with each other, although I can't see the first one. So, or I can't see the second one. So let's try putting this thing back up to a thousand. And then let's change the angle between them. Let's cut that in half. I don't want them to be so close together that I can't tell them apart. This may not yield too much interesting stuff. Okay, so it turns out that the sun is really, really massive. That's what we learned from, from this. Uh, what we can also do is change these things uh, we can also change the second one's distance from the sun. So let's try giving this thing like, I don't know, a 0 0.9 times this whole thing. Just to see what that does. I'd love to be able to get the second one going around the Earth like the moon does, but I don't think that's going to happen. No, I just made them farther apart. Okay. Well, then let's do this. Let's change the mass even more. What's a few orders of magnitude between two, uh, two orbiting bodies, right? Okay, well this just goes to show you how, you know, uh, how much more massive the sun is that these two are barely interacting with each other. Okay, so that was not as interesting as I'd hoped it would be. Oh well. Let's move on to the more interesting one. Let's move to a trinary star system. So we can do this uh, uh, just like we did with the last one. We'll add in a third star. So again, the last time we saw this we had two stars, one of which was uh, orbiting entirely inside the other one. Let's actually go back to these two being identical. Let's start out with three identical stars. Paste this one star three and let's see so this thing uh, we'll need to give them you know these opposite uh, velocities again there we go and then we'll add in the third one so you know, I'm just gonna copy and paste here we're going to make this the third one. And let's have this one be located at x equals negative 1. So we'll have them all three in, you know, a little in, in, in a line with each other. Um, and actually, let's give this one zero velocity. That might be interesting. Let's give that a try, see what that does. So we'll have three stars. They'll start in a line. Oh, and oh my. Well, we didn't want that to happen. Um, <laughs> let's see. So let's not give this one the, uh, the zero velocity. Let's try giving this one a negative 0.5. And let's put the one in the middle, that's the first one, a zero velocity at the beginning. Let's see what happens there. So we have a, we have a zero, a 0.5, and a negative 0.5. Okay, let's see what happens here. 
So this is where we get more interesting stuff. So this is obviously not ellipses. And in fact, they have scattered from each other relatively quickly. Um, let's see, so that might have been a little too much energy. So let's decrease. Oh, because I've added in another body. So that's going to, it's going to change matters. Uh, so let's try these two. Oh, and, okay, so starting them out at rest was not the best idea. Oh, right, because that's actually, I did make the energy less. All right, fine, then we will try. I may, I'm just going to end up needing to give the third one of the, the I'm going to, I'm going to end up needing to give them all velocity is what's going to end up happening. Oh, and I think I changed the wrong thing. Did I just change that instead? I have been changing the wrong thing. Okay, so let's only change the velocities now, Brian. Uh, so we got zero velocity, 0 0.1, and zero. Oh, okay, I was changing the wrong, uh, changing the wrong vector. There we go. Okay, so I probably should have expected that, that that would be symmetric. So let's do this. Let's make this one a negative 0.1 and a negative 0.1 in the x. And let's have this one go in the opposite direction. Here we go. Okay, not quite enough there. Uh, so let's see, maybe if I increase there. Basically right now I am picking numbers to try to get something interesting looking. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So here I've got these two going in ellipses again, because this thing ends up being stationary because I haven't given it any sort of velocity. So now let's try changing that central one's velocity. Uh, ooh, I'm really tempted to give it a Z velocity. I'm going to give it a Y velocity and then I'm going to give it a Z velocity. So let's give it a slight Y velocity and then let's decrease this one's Y velocity by the same amount. Again, just so that way they don't, you know, end up going everywhere off the screen, which they do anyway. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. Oh, forget it. Let's just, fine, they can go off the screen. Okay, so we got a little bit better motion there. Um, with a negative total energy, you would expect them to come back to each other, though. Hmm. Let's do... Okay, so let's do this. Let's give... Let's see, so I have those two canceling out. Let's give this one a Z velocity. See, those are all 0.5s. Yeah, let's try this. Okay, so you see this one's getting larger and smaller. That's because it's coming into, it's because it's coming toward and away from you. I can view that by right clicking, and this is what we end up with is this really cool uh, sort of double spiral pattern. So these are not ellipses, obviously. I mean, they almost look like ellipses from here, except that they're rotating around. But what you notice is that if you zoom in here, they're even, you know, coming up and then back down, which is pretty cool. So here we've got our trinary star system. Cool. Let's see, I've probably been going on for long enough on this. Let's see what happens when we change some of their masses. Uh, let's see, let's cut the, the first one. So that is the one that's traveling in the Z direction. Let's cut that one's mass in half. Probably only going to change. Yeah, so these two are still going to oscillate around it. Oh, now that's interesting. So this thing's now oscillating up and down, uh, 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 in and out along the z-axis. So that's pretty cool. I should just go ahead and make this full screen, shouldn't I? And zoom out. So that's pretty neat. So the central one is now moving in and out like that. Cool. Uh, let's put that one, let's leave that one at a half and let's change one of these two, let's change the other one to a half. There we go. So this is now going to go in a couple different directions, full screen for the folks viewing. Ooh, and we scatter away from each other. Cool. Yeah, the total energy there was, was kind of low. So actually, let's take star three's velocity and cut it in half. Now I've got a, a deeper negative velocity there. Okay, so now this is interesting because one of the stars has scattered away from the other two, but these two continue to oscillate around each other. And in fact, is that one coming back? 
Is that star coming back? I think that star is coming back. Oh my. This is just real. Oh, this story just gets more and more interesting, doesn't it? And I wish I was more adept at rotating this thing so I could see. Oh, that star might be coming back. Oh, that's interesting. Cool. So which one went, which which one was that that, that went away? Um, oh boy, it's nearly impossible to tell. Okay, it's the smaller one. I thought I had them the same size. Hmm. Radius equals that. Radius equals. Oops, this needs to be a three, doesn't it? Don't mind me, folks. Just you know, making a major correction to the code. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it is one of the smaller ones. Okay. It's bouncing away. All right, cool. Uh, let's try one last thing. Let's try decreasing this thing's velocity. Oh, no, that's interesting. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was not the way to do that, apparently. So let's keep that at 0.5. Uh, let's try... Hmm. You know what? Let's try one more thing. Let's get really crazy here. Oh, do I have the, oh. Let's try one really crazy thing here. You knew it had to come at some point, right? The random function. Let's try making all these components randomized, only not quite so big as that. We're gonna randomize all these velocities and just see what kind of things we get. So we've got four, or excuse me, we've got nine randomized velocity components. Five. So basically every time you run it, you'll get a different pretty animation. Uh, let's see. There we go. Well, that didn't last very long. Neither did that. This just goes to show you how finely tuned uh, these star systems have to be. Well, anyway, that's been a lot of fun. Um, what we are going to do next time is we're going to get a little more technical with this. So this has been a lot of fun. We've been making some fun animations. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to take this system and we're going to make what's called a phase space plot. Um, and uh, uh, I'll let you, if, if you want to do some reading about that ahead of time, I'll let you do that. I'm not going to try to explain it uh, now at the end of the video. But next time we're going to create what's called a phase space plot of these three body interactions and uh, it's, it's going to give us some more interesting insights into how the things are behaving. So thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.